Hello everyone, welcome back to Hunting in South Dakota with Daryl. I'm Kurt Johnson. Last week on our show, we got to see the fish saning crew of Dave Raw Fish and the process they go through to sane rough fish from Big Stone Lake. We followed them as they drilled holes in the ice to drop their 3,200 foot net. We watched them drop submarines to direct the large net around a teardrop shape covering over half a mile in length and over a quarter of a mile wide to collect fish. We watched them cut the big hole at the end that the net gets pulled through with their catch of the day. We saw them shove huge chunks of ice back into the lake and out of the way of the nets. Then we got to see the beginning of the net coming to the big hole and the many things other than fish, including huge tree limbs, they also clear out of the lake. We saw them jump into the icy cold water to hold the net in place. We saw the top of the bag come to the surface and make it to the big hole. We saw spectators gather to see this magnificent sight. And now we get to see just what they caught for all of their efforts. So hang on to your seats and that fresh cup of coffee you just poured. Here we go, season two, episode nine, the conclusion of Saning Fish on Big Stone. Well, they caught some serious rough fish and some game fish. Now the game fish they pull out, like walleyes, northerns, perch, crappies, etc., must be thrown right back into the lake, except for the white bass or silver bass, as we will refer to them, which the crew is allowed to keep. The rough fish include, and you will see many of them, carp, suckers, buffalo, and sheep's head or freshwater drum. The fish have to be sorted literally one at a time to place them all in separate containers. A lengthy process that's fast paced and very important. These workers must know the types of fish and be able to distinguish them all very quickly to sort them into the right containers. Some fish go into boxes or crates, but the majority of them will go into storage holes that were cut out earlier. These fish will be stored in these holes for at least overnight until they can be picked up and loaded for shipment. In this particular case, most of these fish will go to Chinatown in New York City. It's an almost non-stop process. 
that must keep going until the bag of fish is empty, usually an all-day job. And then the fish are on their way to New York City. The big mouth buffalo are the largest and most important commercial species among the sucker family. These fish are a native fish of North America. Individuals over 30 pounds are not uncommon and the maximum size ever reported is about 80 pounds. They feed on zooplankton and are called planktivores. They stay in mid to deep water in schools. Carp were introduced to the U.S. in the mid-1880s as a food fish. Since then, they have spread to virtually all fresh waters in the country. They can reach 40 to 50 pounds. They are opportunistic bottom feeders and will eat a variety of insects and green plant material. Although carp and suckers are a freshwater fish species that have similar ties, they belong to separate families of fishes. The white bass or silver bass is a game fish and one of their native ranges in the United States is right here in northeastern South Dakota at Lake Ponset. Some say that if you soak them in milk for 24 hours to lessen the fishy taste and then fry, bake, or wrap them in tin foil and throw them in a fire, they are as good eating as a walleye. Sheep's head or freshwater drum is the only widespread species of this family of fish. Although it reaches a maximum of over 20 pounds, adult sheep's head are most commonly about one to eight pounds. Some say if you bake or fry them and dip them in drawn butter, they can taste like tender lobster or crab. I don't know, I've never tried them. So it's uh, Brian Hopkins, right? Yep. There's you said, Brian Hopkins. Yep. I'll try and get you guys figured out here, buddy. The drum, they got uh, rock in their head. They really do. They do? Yeah. Got earrings for yourself. All right. Yeah. I think 
they're slippery when you catch them and try to take them off a of hook. Start walking on them. <laughs> when are you leaving for your vacation? Monday early morning. Oh, okay. Very excited. I'll bet. Yeah, I'll be thinking of these guys while I'm gone. Yeah. Okay, I didn't really want to have to work today, but I guess I do. Yeah. Got a lot of packing to do yet. Oh, yeah. Where are you flying out of? No, we're flying out of Fargo. Okay. And then we uh, reconnect with Chicago. Yeah. And then all the way to Puerto Vallarta. Yep. Nice. Hey, it's a very fun experience. They did well on silver bass yesterday. Yes, we did. Yeah. Soft. Right. This day was cold, the wind was piercing, and these fishermen were in for a long day of it as they went from one storage area to another to collect the fish they pulled in the previous day for loading on the trucks that were going to head for Chinatown in New York the same day.
As we wind up our fish seining story, we want to remind everyone some of the factors of a day at work for this fishing crew. It can be frigid out there, and wet, and slippery, and repetitive. It requires agility, strength, and ability to withstand extremely cold temperatures. And it requires a camaraderie, a sense of trust, and maybe even a passion for this job to get through some of the long days out here and whatever it is that keeps them coming back. Some of these men have been doing it for much of their lives, but we're glad they're doing it and we're glad we get to share this experience with them. Okay, I'm out here with a couple of guys. We're out here fishing on Lake Pelican today, right guys? Yep. Lake Pelican, and uh, we're trying to catch some walleyes and perch, and I found two fishermen on the lake today. One of them's name is Easton. Yep. And the other one's name is? Sam. Sam. Say hi for us, guys. Hello. Uh, tell me, uh, how old you are? Where do you go to school? I'm 10 years old, and I go to Lincoln Elementary. I'm 11, and I go link to Lincoln Elementary. Okay, you guys friends or brothers? Yep. Okay. Friends. Uh, who's the fisherman here? Both. You both fish? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. You caught any today? Uh, well, we've had a couple. We have a couple flags, but yeah, that's but about that's it. it. Oh, no fishing yeah. yet? Do you guys do a lot of fishing? Yeah. Yeah. My grandpa makes lures, so I'm kind of into fishing. It's a fun sport. Okay. Who, uh, who do you usually go fishing with? Your grandpa or your dad? Uh, or? Both. You go Depending. both? I go with him a lot. Okay. Do you guys hunt? Yes. You do? Okay. Well, we you have a hunting show. You guys got to watch it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what, what, what do you like to hunt? Um, pheasants. You go pheasant hunting? Yep. Uh, and how old are you guys again? Ten. Uh, and I'm 11. You're 11. Okay. That's right. You don't shoot a gun yet? I Almost. Get, I get to shoot. Oh, you did? Yep. Did you get a pheasant? Yes, I got two for the whole season. You got two pheasants? Yep. Do you have a picture of them? Uh, yes, I think I, my dad got one. Okay. All right. We'll see. Do anybody want to say hi to? Hey, Mom. Oh. <laughs> hi, Mom. All right. Uh, what's your name? My name's Monty Thury. Oh, we got okay. a flag up. Oh, you got a good one. All right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Perfect timing. You get him? Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, Northern. Oh, yeah. You got the flyers, Butch? Good job, Easton. Thank you. Yeah, all right. We just come over and say hi to these guys and they caught a fish for us. Nice. <laughs> there he goes. Back to the lake. Got something, yeah. All right. Nice. Nice job, buddy. What is he, about 14? I think he's bigger than 14. Is he? Yeah. Cool. Very nice. Oh, you got another one? A little perch. Oh, my goodness. That's a tiny perch. 
boy, five o'clock is right. It hit five o'clock and we caught two fish, bang, bang. We caught a walleye and perch at the same time. Yeah, come on over and see him. Not bad, huh? Yeah. Did you guys catch any more yet? Nope. No? We had one tip going. up. Yeah. We had one Did you? Tip up. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. No, we're from Watertown. They're from Watertown, but they got uh, farmland in Huron, right? Yep. That's awesome. Got two fish. Got a really nice walleye. Uh, and we're going to call it quits. Not quite dark yet, but we want to get off the lake. It turned real cold out. The wind came up and, and the sun went down. It got cold, so we're calling it quits. So. But we had a lot of fun. One good bite, and we caught that. This lake's been noted for being real good fishing here just the last couple of years again. The walleyes are up to 17 inches, and that's going to be bring a lot of fishermen in this next coming spring and summer. Before you go away today, we want you to know we've got a fabulous show for you next week that will include some of our favorite moments of the 2013 hunting season. It will also include our follies for the 2013 season. Oh yeah, don't miss it. Now, from all of us here on our show, thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next time on Hunting in South Dakota with Daryl.